Today, she can't really move. Stella's spinal sheath is shattered and the cat is also showing signs of brain damage. It's a devastating illness, basically. Ironically, veterinarians strongly suspect the cause is a diet of gourmet pet food. I'd have to say that the circumstantial link is extremely high because we've got nearly 50 cats affected to date uh, out of a population of probably only 500 or so cats that might have been fed the diet. And we've seen no cats with this particular problem that have not been fed the diet, which is the other worrying thing and, and makes the definite link with the food. Since July, Richard Stomps had been feeding his cat a Canadian-made pet food called Origin. At $70 a bag, it's marketed as biologically appropriate to match a pet's natural diet, high in protein and low in carbohydrates. Come here, Frank. Across Sydney, another 50 felines that have eaten it are now paralysed. Champion Pet Foods has now voluntarily recalled its origin pet food from Australia. While the company exports its popular cat food to more than a dozen countries, it says only Australia has experienced the disease outbreak and blames Australia's irradiation for the problem. Under Australian quarantine laws, all imported pet food has to be irradiated or heat treated to kill off potential diseases. Pet food is required to be irradiated at a rate of 50 times that required on some imported fruits. Unlike food for human consumption, there are no laws that require pet food to be labelled as irradiated. Australian Quarantine declined to speak to the 7.30 report, but in a statement says Australia's irradiation standards are based on international guidelines and on advice from the Australian Animal Health Laboratory. The owners of this pet store have sold hundreds of kilograms of origin and say even if irradiation is to blame, the company was too slow to react. For Champion Pet Foods to be aware that there's a potential problem and say nothing, I think is totally irresponsible. Champion says its products were safe when they left the factory and it took time to understand the effects of irradiation. Terry Horsfall says his veterinarian was threatened with legal action if she spoke out against the origin product. Champion had threatened her with legal action if she said anything publicly. So two weeks had gone by where cats are continuing to consume the cat food. No one had any indication there's a problem. Champion had made quite the opposite of making people aware there's a problem. They blocked the people who knew there's a problem from telling everyone. Vets say the threat of litigation is a heavy weight to bear. It's very difficult because you know you, you can be sued for libel for accusing a particular product of causing a problem um, and so that it's very hard to get that information out there and, and to find, as I said, whether there's a common experience. The pet food industry is largely self-regulated. It has a code of practice, not laws, to guide companies on issuing product recalls and labelling. I think that every company um, is, is required to act promptly when they recognise that there is a clear cause and effect association between a product quality issue and um, pet health. And in those cases, certainly from our organisation's perspective, once we understand the facts, once we understand the clear causal link between a product and a problem, then we would act swiftly to make the decision to recall a product from the shelf. But questions have been raised as to what is a prompt recall. In another case, a Kramer dog food treat made in China was recently taken off Australian supermarket shelves after it was revealed the product was linked to a debilitating kidney disease. Even though there, there's absolutely no scientific proof or link between Fanconi syndrome and our product, uh, the chicken breast strips, which is a, a frustration to us, uh, because of uh, our care for the, the, the pets out there and the, the cases that have been raised with us, we have decided as a precaution to voluntarily recall the product. But vets say Kramer was first notified of the problem more than a year ago. Christine Hubay's two white-haired fox terriers both fell ill in May after eating the treats. Up until now, their treatment has cost about $1,069 
which to some people would be impossible. And so I just think it's completely reprehensible that nothing could be done about this. You know, my vets were keen to do something, but they were threatened with being sued, right, by the company. And that's appalling. The head of Kramer denies there was a case of Fanconi syndrome before August last year. Up until then, we never had a single incident. In response to the voluntary recall, more than 100 pet owners and vets have contacted Kramer about dogs that are ill. With more than 70,000 tonnes of cash and dog food imported into Australia, veterinarians and pet owners are now calling for an overhaul in the way the pet food sector is regulated. It would be, I think, essential to have a reporting body just so that things like this may be picked up sooner and they would have the resources to mount a case for a problem and then put the problem to the pet food company. So when you go into a supermarket and buy pet food, you don't really know what you're getting. The manufacturers are self-regulated. Now there's a list of ingredients, but you don't know where those ingredients come from and you don't also know if the food's been irradiated because they don't have to put that on the label. And so that's what happened with Stella. I really didn't know what I was getting when I bought it. 